Hey, I'm Peter Lazaroff, Chief Investment Officer at PlanCorp, and with me today is Senior Wealth Manager Daniel Lee. Daniel, how's it going today? I'm doing fantastic. How are you, Peter? I'm pretty good. I'm in the office, which is a little unusual. Most of my work has been from home, but we have so much year-end stuff with clients that there are a few things I had to get done here today. And I actually did a lot of my year-end planning over the past weekend, and there's still a little bit of it coming in the week ahead. But each year, I know for myself, I like to update my balance sheet or my net worth statement. And we at PlanCorp actually have a net worth statement that you can download, and we'll be sure to put it below in the links. But for me, what I like about this is you can compare where you were last year to where you are right now. So you can see progress. You can see changes. Um, it's also a really good tool for my wife and I to talk about our money goals, the progress we're making towards them, our current situation. Um, so that's something at the end of the year that I always tend to do just to kind of make sure my financial house is in order. The other thing for me, at least, um, and I don't know about you, but I feel I find that because a big part of our compensation comes in the back half of the year. That means that there has to be some preparation um, for me. Like I'm paying big bills, like my disability insurance, or maybe there are some uh, retirement savings accounts that I really tackle once I have this big payment. Um, how about yourself? Yeah, I do something similar. I, I check my net worth statement. Uh, it's always nice to see kind of track the progress of where you're going. Um, and I, I do a lot of my next year planning around this time. So how much I'm going to put into my investment account per month, and then I, I automate it and, and set it, and then it goes. Well, and I think this time of year, everyone's thinking about holiday gifts and how do I prepare for holiday gifts? And it's the planning that you do the year in advance that really gets you in a good spot. I mean, I always start out with a budget for holiday gifts, and somehow we get into breach it, um, you know, each and every single year. You know, any other kind of thoughts for people as they're out spending money or trying to set their goals? Um, Heading into next year, I totally agree. The time to to plan your holiday spending is not for 2020; it's for 2021's holiday spending. And if you can save, I don't know, hundred dollars a month or whatever it is that, that you can save for next year, it becomes a less a much less stressful kind of time of the year. And the last thing I was going to bring up that I think is kind of interesting is that neither of us have talked about investments yet. And I really, I just don't look at my portfolio very often. I think in 2020, I looked at it twice. Um, and part of that's because I'm the chief investment officer and I kind of know where our investments are to begin with. But the other part of it's, you know, day to day, it's not going to make that big a difference. However, this is the time of year where a lot of predictions are coming out. You get the annual forecasts. Um, it's perfectly natural to review your performance, but I think it's really important to point out that, you know, I'm not looking at my portfolio to make big changes just because it's the end of the year. You know, it's, it's a constant due diligence process. I know, Daniel, you're on the investment committee with me as well. And, you know, we're constantly looking at these things. And with our clients, we're more focused on things like Roth conversions and donor advised funds. Um, you know, what sort of like conversations are you having, Daniel, yourself with clients at this time of year? Yeah, because so many of the predictions are made right around this time of the year, it kind of becomes dangerous because people want to make these big changes to their portfolio when it's probably not necessary. Uh, but the types of conversations that I'm having outside of that are related to taxes. So is there anything that we can do before December 31st that can save our clients uh, some money? Examples of that would be opening a donor advice fund or or maybe actually even paying taxes early by making some Roth conversions if this year happens to be a low income year for you with all that's going on. Um, and then again, kind of looking forward to next year, what are some tax strategies for 2021 that we should be making? It's kind of an odd year because we don't know what the tax situation will look like going forward, uh, but certainly conversations that are uh, valuable and, and worth having. Well, and that's a great point to make. You know, as we sign off here, remember that as there are tax law changes, we will surely be getting you the latest site insights on the how we feel like you can navigate those. And as always, if you're looking for more of our information, you can go to startmyplan.com, which is just nine questions. And what that allows us to do is to give you our best content tailored specifically to your needs. Um, we appreciate you all watching. If you ever have any questions, please reach out to us anytime. Daniel, thanks as always for joining me. Absolutely. Happy holidays, everyone.